Hello. I have to tell you that the church has been saved, or not saved as the case may be. Here we have a nice case of the of a black conservative trainee vicar who has been blocked from joining the Church of England because he reckons the Church of England is too woke and has said so on several occasions. Calvin Robinson, uh, for those of you who don't watch uh, YouTube that much, is uh, frequently on stuff like B, uh, GB News and I think he does podcasts as well. And he's uh, got very forthright views about wokeness many of which I agree with, although it says here he's not entirely sure that women should be ordained. I'm not too sure that I agree on that, but I do agree that the Church of England has gone completely rotten. And it's the, um, it's the bishops. Yeah, the problem is that the bishops are the ones who choose the vicars coming up. So there's a, a group, the Archbishop of Canterbury, who, for whom I have very little respect, who pours his heart out on the television and, and, and talks about institutional racism and all the rest of it. He's the one who gathers the other bishops and then they're the ones who choose the vicars. And the Church of England is going, <laughs> going to hell in a handbasket you might say. A black conservative trainee vicar claims he was blocked from becoming a Church of England priest because of his anti-woke views and that he does not believe the UK is institutionally racist. And I've heard him talk. And yes, I think there is racism in, uh, the, in Britain. There's racism everywhere. If you go to Africa, you will find racism there not only against white people, but against other black people from different tribes. You f in China, you find horrendous racism. Of course, in Japan, you find racism. You ask them about the Ainu there. In Sweden, you found racism against the Sami. I, I, um, I'm not saying that these people are bad. I'm saying that every culture uh, has people in it who are who can't handle other people, who can't handle people who think a bit differently or live a, a different life or who do things in different ways. I remember when my, um, uh, there, there were a lot of uh, people from the Indian subcontinent turning up in Leeds at one time, uh, so quite suddenly. And I was walking through Lewis's, a department store in Leeds with my mother. And there was an Indian family there and they were buying something and the mater familias was looking for something in a bag she had been carrying, but she wasn't bending over. She didn't put the bag on a table. She squatted down and she was looking through the bag from this squatting position. Now, her... The, the younger women who were with her were obviously embarrassed by this. It was very Indian. They were obviously embarrassed. But my mother, who I, I have said before, had... It was very strange. She had very racist opinions. And then when finally she got a Jamaican next door neighbour, she absolutely loved her, which just shows that it's a matter of the difference between what you see at a distance and what you experience as a human being. Um, that was her generation. I don't blame her. She never caused anyone any harm. She wouldn't have ever caused anyone any harm, uh, but she just had these opinions. But the point was, when we walked past, my mother was muttering, oh, they, she's not in bloody India now, or... Yeah, it was something like that. What's she doing down there? She's not in India now. Uh, something like that. She didn't like it. And uh, obviously the younger women didn't like it much either. But of course, that was their mother or mother-in-law. They weren't going to say anything. But so you're always going to get those things popping up, especially with something new. As I said, 20 years later, uh, my mother... Uh, she didn't even think about it. She just got used to the idea. 
Um, but so, but what I, I'm saying is there is racism, but institutional racism, no, no, far from it. Institutionally, I think people, well, in Britain, in America, in Sweden, are, are, are bending over backwards to ignore their concerns about strange cultures or whatever and to embrace the new. So I'd, I'm a, along with, the, with Calvin there, um, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Robinson, that we are not institutionally racist. But coming down from on high, the bishops say, oh, yes, we are. You know, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa, all, all, all that sort of... Anyway, Calvin Robinson has accused the church uh, because they of uh, blocking him because he's not woke enough for them. The political pundit is known for his right-wing views, which include opposition to the Black Lives, Latter, <laughs> Black Lives Matter movement, uh, which, yeah, I'm with him, and suggesting women should not be ordained. I'm not with him on that. He had been training to become a priest at the University of Oxford for the past two years and was due to begin a curacy at a parish in Holborn, London, but was turned down for the role by the Bishop of Fulham, the Right Reverend Jonathan Baker. Bishop of Fulham. Oh, you're a bad... I was going to say you're a bad boy, but you stay off the word boy, haven't you? According to Mr. Robinson, it was never clear why he was denied the position other than that parishioners might complain about his media presence. Yeah, he's on, as I say, GB News and other talkies uh, along uh, quite a lot. He offered to reduce his media work, but was told, oh, the moment had passed. So here's a guy who, who is willing to sacrifice what appears to me to be a very promising and influential media career in order to become a parish curate, not even a full-fledged priest, you know, a, a priest, a, a, a fetcher and carrier of the church. The, the difficult jobs the curate gets. And he was prepared to do that. This is a man the church should be embracing, should be grabbing with both hands. No, no, he's not woke enough for them. Mr. Robinson said, being told there was no position for me in the church was absolutely heartbreaking. It was soul destroying. This is not just a job I've applied for. It's a vocation I feel called for by God. And they uh, they won't take him. Oh. Mr. Robinson submitted a subject access request uh, to the Church of England asking the organisation for access to the personal information it held on him. It was then that he discovered a series of internal emails between church bosses raising concerns over his opinions on institutional racism in Britain. And if anyone knows about institutional racism, it should be him. I, I'm quite sure he has come across people he regards as racists and nasty people and narrow minded and all the rest of it. But he has shrugged it off. Because, you know, I've met people who are um, annoyed about women. Um, I, I've met people who disparage me because when I was at boarding school in the south of England, I had kids making fun of my northern accent. Girls at school. You, you, you get this all the time. There are people like that all the time. You've just got to live with it. Maybe a bit tougher if you're an ethnic minority, but yeah, uh, th that's life. And just plain ordinary people get all sorts of stuff as well. Yeah, I got, I'm plain ordinary person, but possibly a bit more intelligent than more of my most of my schoolmates. I got a lot of aggro about that. Well, what can you do 
about that. I got, I got aggro about being too short for the netball team. They always, uh, you know, the teacher would sort of say, okay, you, 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 you're in the red team. You, 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 you're in the green team. It would be like that. And whenever I got assigned to whichever team it was, there was a universal groan because I was absolutely hopeless at netball. Not only could I not jump that well, but also I was just very short. I still am very short. And I got aggro for that. You know, it. <laughs> it's just the way things are. In one email, uh, the Right Reverend Rob Wickham, Bishop of Edmonton, voiced concerns to senior church leaders after Mr. Robinson suggested Britain was not a racist country. So there's Rob Wickham. Oh, Mr. Wickham, right name, is annoyed because a an obviously black man or partly black man had said that Britain wasn't racist. Can you imagine the stupidity of that? The, I'm having trouble coming to grips with that, I have to say. In another email, the Bishop of Fulham writes, I wanted a word about an ordinant, Calvin Robinson. You might be aware of him. He's very active on Twitter and has a huge following. His political agenda is, I guess, what you would call libertarian anti-woke. OK, so even this Bishop of Fulham says, no, he's not a raging fascist, not a militant fanatic or anything. No. He's libertarian. <gasps> oh, Anti-identity politics, COVID sceptical, etc. Well, you know, the list, the basket of deplorables. His tweets get him into trouble sometimes and there have been complaints to the Bishop of London that he should not be ordained. Mr. Robinson described the church's approach to his views as very narrow-minded. Oh, Calvin. Mr. Robinson, just saying very narrow-minded is the most polite thing anyone could say about that bunch of self-regarding idiots. Yeah. Mr. Robinson also claim, claims the Bishop of London, the right reverend, not right reverend to me, Sarah Mullally, refused to take into consideration his lived experience as an ethnic minority when the pair were discussing institutional racism in the church. He alleges she told him, as a white woman, I can tell you that the church is institutionally racist. This is this white woman telling this black man uh, what the church is and she heads it. Why doesn't she just leave the post? I mean, if it's that bad, she shouldn't be a high official there. Former teacher. You see, this is a guy who's just done nothing but give. And he's, he's uh, still fairly young and he's been a teacher and now he wants to be a vicar. Mr. Robinson added, she was just ignorant. Yeah, and she's a bishop. How did that happen? She accused me of being controversial, so I said to her in a polite way that some of the things she says are controversial too, like the fact that she thinks the church is institutionally racist. And then she turned round and said that. She was contradicting herself because in one instance she's saying the church is racist and needs to listen to the lived experiences of ethnic minorities, but then she was refusing to listen to my lived experience as a black man because it didn't fit with her narrative. Okay, so Robinson said he would be leaving the Church of England to join the breakaway conservative group Global Anglican Future Conference. That's a terrible shame. That really is a tragic shame. And the trouble with these breakaway movements is they, they never get very far and they never get much of a voice. And they generally sort of fall apart in little, uh, little uh, factions. The, the, the whole thing is a terrible tragedy. And uh, the uh, what, um, a spokesperson uh, for the Diocese of London said, we work with and support ordinance through the 
discernment process to establish the right path for each person. In this instance, it's felt there is no suitable option available that London can currently offer. Oh yeah, a black man and they're not letting him become a vicar in the, in the London area. Oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? We continue to be in conversation with Calvin. No, 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 no. A conversation is when two people talk to each other on equal terms about a subject which in which they work out the validity of uh, whichever opinion it is. And they're not in a conversation with him. They are not listening to a word he says. They are in the cone of silence as far as Calvin Robinson is, uh, is concerned. Uh, we continue to be in conversation with Calvin, are willing to work with him to discern the right way forward. No, discern the right way forward. I just want you to see that word because discern isn't isn't the word you should be using here. The word is see, to see the right way forward, to decide on the right way forward. Discern is a posh word, uh, to which means to see. When people start using posh words like that, it means they're hiding something in them. I, I mean, I use using a long word that defines what you want to say is not a bad sign. What is a bad sign is when you use a long or an obscure word, when you could use a simple one to say the same thing. When he uses the word discern, it means he's hiding something and probably hiding something from himself. It means he's obfuscating. It means he's slipping sideways from the issue. So he's using a word that, that doesn't quite mean what the word see means. In that one use of that one word, you have the whole argument right there about what's happening to Calvin Robinson. To discern the right way forward, and we keep him in our prayers. Yeah, I'll bet the prayers are, please God, keep him away from us. Right, well, I, okay. Uh, yeah. I, I got a phone call while I was uh, doing my sign off. So I, I'm, I'm going to repeat that. I am Granny Opterix. I am to be found on YouTube, Rumble, Bitchute and Minds. I, I'm also on Twitter, Gab and Parlour, where I am at Granny Opterix. And I let you know when I've uploaded a video on one of those platforms. Well, on all of them. If you subscribe to one of them, then you'll always get notifications. YouTube tends to be a little careless in that respect. OK, well, till next time. Oh, and God bless. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opterix design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.